Hey, this is the Fit Gear Hunter here to do a full analytical review of the Garmin Ele Elevate heart rate sensor that is found on a majority of the Garmin watches right now. So this is sort of a significant, more analytical review, looking at a bunch of different CrossFit or high intensity interval workouts. I'm here in my home gym, CrossFit Homeward in Chapel Hill. If you're ever in the area, please stop in and do, uh, you know, drop in to work out with us. But the biggest thing about the Garmin Elevate heart rate sensor is that it covers a long line of the watches. So you have the Forerunner series, the 245, the 745, the 945, you have the Phoenix series, the Phoenix 6S, the 6, and the 6X. So the heart rate sensor is on a lot of the other watches, the Garmin Venue, the Vivo Active 4. So it covers the primary, you know, the primary offerings that Garmin has out now. Now, what I'll say in the beginning is this whole YouTube channel and the website associated with it, fitgearhunter.com, is all dedicated to tra tracking devices to see how they work for CrossFit or high intensity interval training versus all the other running and biking reviews that you might see out on the internet today. So, we want to get in. So the biggest thing I would say before looking at any optical heart rate sensor is that it's you know, right on the wrist. You're going to get a lot of wrist flex, and so none will be that accurate. You always have to or should always use a chest strap when tracking your workouts to be able to get the right intensity intervals, to be able to track your strain levels, to be able to track your training effect from the workout, your load, your needed recovery time. Have to use a chest strap if you want to really have accurate measurement to track and evaluate your fitness development over time. But I still wanted to do a full evaluation of the heart rate sensor. So what we're going to do is I took it through a multiple of workouts across a multiple of different types of movements, deadlifts, thrust you know, dumbbell work, kettlebell work, pull-ups, and we'll look at each of those workouts in a hands-on in a second to see how the heart rate on the optical side only compared to a chest strap. So I was tracking everything against the H10 Polar chest strap com connected to uh, the Polar Beat app. So you'll see similar, you know, dynamics when it comes to the workout evaluation, but we'll see all the same heart rate st statistics and specifics to be able to see how this heart rate held up. Obviously, when you're tracking things, the highest level of intensity zones is going to determine the biggest impact on your body and your need for recovery. So when I look at the evaluation, I'm going to track in smaller ways. I'm going to give a smaller percentage of the evaluation to the average heart rate tracking. I'm going to give a small percentage evaluation to how the Garmin system, based on the heart rate you produced, gave you a training effect score versus the Polar system on the accurate heart rate chest strap gives you a cardio load score. So they're not the same universe. So I'm just going to compare a little bit of similarities with a small percentage dedicated to tracking that. But the biggest amount of tracking is going to be to the zone five, which is your 90 to 100% of your heart rate maximum and the zone four which is the 80 to 90%. So they're gonna be a heavy focus of the overall percentage success in the zone five, and then a smaller focus in the zone four and five combined to see how many minutes it actually picked up. Because obviously you're doing CrossFit, you're doing high intensity interval training, you're peaking your heart rate in an extensive way for a period of time and then maybe dropping it back down. So we need to see how the optical heart rate stands up. Now, obviously I tested the Sunto 7 in this sort of analytical way and it got a 40% out of 100. I tested the Polar Vantage V2, which is the newest optical heart rate from Polar, the Precision Palm 2.0, and that got a 60% out of 100. So we'll track this. So let's look at some of the scores and we'll come back for a summary. Okay, so we can see it firing there. That's the green lights. This is the Elevate heart rate sensor. It's the same sensor I found on all those different watches. It's basically two large green diodes and it also includes the pulse ox test, which is a red diode that comes on at night or if you're tracking all day. Um, that's the basic summary from what it looks like on the back. Okay, so we're just going to cover a multiple of different workouts. So this one obviously is a clean front squat and jerk in the beginning with the metabolic conditioning, the Metcon for every minute on the minute. Here's how it scored with a chest strap. So 130 beats per minute average heart rate. It did give a training load cardio, you know, evaluation of 78. And if you look at it on the Garmin, 133 average beats per minute. So close there and the 3.3 out of five on the aerobic training effect compared to 78 and 130. You look at the time in the red zone in the top zone, nine minutes and 48 seconds and the uh, second highest the zone four, four minutes compared to the Garmin at 911 and 355. So that's relatively close, 948, 405, and then 911, 355. And you can look at the chart 
Obviously, it picked up all the lifting in clean um, isolation when you have a chest strap plus the Metcon at the end. And it picked up most of those. I mean, it didn't have the smooth hills as it did at the chest strap, but it did have the higher intensity Metcon on the backside. Second workout, this was a Yugo Igo partner wide. It was 10 rounds and every, you know, you had to do a full round of hang squat cleans, air squats and strict pull-ups before the partner did their round. Um, 132 beats per minute average on the chest strap with a cardio load of 73 at the bottom versus 132 average beats per minute. So spot on with the average beats per minute and the training effect of 3.0 out of five and you look at the time in the intensity zone, the zone five, five minutes and 46 seconds, and then 11 minutes in zone four. And then off the Garmin, it missed on the zone five a little bit at one minute, 19, 10 minutes in the zone four. So it's falling short a little bit there, and these will all get compiled. Obviously, there's the rounds, five rounds, you know, you go, I go, the intensity level there. It picked up the rounds on the uh, optical heart rate sensor in a relative fashion, just didn't catch the peaks as much as it should have. And there's the Polar Vantage V2, which just failed relatively miserably on that whole workout. So next workout, power clean plus a clean, plus the front squat on the backside, and then the Metcon every minute on the minute for 15 minutes. The chest strap picked up 111 beats per minute, 45 on the cardio load, and the Garmin was 120 average beats per minute, so 111, so it actually overshot in this one. Training effect of 2.5 over five, and then the Vantage V2 is a little bit okay on the average, but the training load pro or the cardio load was low on the 3.6 size. No red zone for this workout, four minutes in the zone four, and it's about the same with the Garmin. So it was actually tracking those top zones relatively accurately. It just overshot probably zone three versus zone four to get an average higher heart rate. Um, the Polar Vantage V picked up none of that. So you can see the clean um, lifts in the beginning plus the every minute on the minute in the backside. And the Garmin picked up some of that, but not quite all of it as perfectly. And then the Vantage V2 failed on that. Um, so then you have the strict handstand push-ups for a couple of rounds and then squat jerk followed by the Metcon, which was a rotating th three times through four minute and wrap with two minutes of rest. So you'll get some big peaks, 115 minutes uh, beats per minute, average heart rate in a cardio load score of 60 and on the Garmin the 125 average beats and a training effect of 3.2 so still in that same range the Polar Advantage V did somewhat less I missed it because I didn't take the watch with me for the first run um, so it missed on the heart on the chest strap it missed some of it so that's six minutes 14 seconds plus an extra 50 on that run and the Garmin picked it up pretty well so again it looks like it's getting right in the same similar zones with a little maybe overshooting it and the Vantage V2 failed short. So you can see the chest strap, the, the lifting in the beginning, plus the four minute end wraps on rotation, two minute rest in between. The Garmin picked it up relatively well. So at least you can see the hills. You can't see the lifting hills as, as well. So that's a problem. Obviously it's not picking up the heart rate in the higher intensity wrist movement, wrist flex on the handstand pushups. And then the Vantage V2 falls a little short. This one is back squats, followed by SOTS pressed, followed by four rounds for time, so a constant metabolic conditioning. 119 beats per minute average with a cardio load of 62 versus 119 beats per minute. You know, exactly spot on at the average heart rate, a training effect of 2.8. So spot on there, and the Vantage V2 fell short from what it should. So nine minutes in the red zone with only one minute in the zone four and the Garmin missed it. So it missed the top zone by a number of minutes. So two minutes, 40 seconds in the red zone with six minutes in the zone four. And uh, the Garmin, you know, the Polar Vantage V2 was well off. So you can see, you know, the lifting in the beginning with just the, you know, constant upper level heart rate in the end with the Metcon. The Garmin picked it up somewhat, but it just had a fluctuation to it, especially in the Metcon that missed a lot of the hard and more intense work. And uh, the Vantage V2 just further short of that. Last workout, so clean and jerk, you know, barbell row, and then metabolic conditioning is the every minute on the minute for 10 minutes. 110 minute beats per minute average with a cardio load of 48 at the bottom, 131. So this is where one of the times that Garmin just shot it way high for some reason. So again, 110 average versus 131 average, 3.0 in the training effect, and the Vantage V2 was well off. 
So only nine minutes in the zone four versus 12 minutes 56. So again, it was overshooting the heart rate in some of that mid-level zone, nothing on the Vantage V2. And you can see the clean, consistent elevation of heart rate with some of the harder work in the beginning on the lift portion, as well as the Metcon keeping it at a higher level in general. And then the Garmin is just sort of all over the place. And this is what happens with optical heart rate monitors. They just, they can have times where they're just all over the place, don't provide an accurate tracking. Um, then the Vantage V2 is just well off the mark for that one. There's a recovery time update just because it, it showed, you know, I had better rest, so I had, I had a shortened recovery time. Um, and actually, I think this is the last workout. So the lifting portion, strict pull-ups and handstand shoulder taps, followed by a, just a more intense metabolic conditioning, a 30-minute 30, you know, 30 cap, didn't take quite that long, 127 beats per minute average, and a higher cardio load score of 96. And the Garmin fell in a similar bucket, 130 beats per minute average with three and a half out of five on the training effect. 12 minutes, 45 seconds on the upper level zone and 11 in the zone four. And it missed it on the Garmin. It missed, only got about half. So 12 minutes, 45 or six minutes. So it gets some lower scores there. And uh, there's the chest strap, obviously kept it, you know, constant through the more intense Metcon at the end. And the Garmin picked it up, but didn't quite track the height of it. So what do we see? This is the last of the workout. So let's get into the summary of how they all looked and what the final score was. So we can see that in the average percentages for average heart rate, it's scoring in the hundreds of overshooting it in some ways, but right sort of spot on. If we were to compare the training effect on a zero to five ratio, compared to the cardio load on a zero to a hundred ratio, it was similar in some of those percentages, but the zone five is where you get a lot of inconsistency. So it'll track, it was tracking spot on in a couple workouts, which is in, impressive from an optical heart rate sensor, but well off the mark in some of them in the lower zones. And the same thing with zone four and five combined together, total minutes in both those zones, it was actually a little bit more accurate, but obviously there's gaps. If you look at it across a chart, the top line being the orange, the average heart rate. Again, that looks really consistent or looks really good. And the blue line, the load evaluation is somewhat giving a similar load evaluation to the cardio load tracking metric of polars. But you can see that it's a little all over the place when it came to zone five. This is, you know, really correct, not correct at all. Really correct, not correct at all. So it's a little bit uncertain what you're gonna get. A little bit better on the zone four and five tracking um, as well. So what's the final score for the optical heart rate sensor from Garmin. Here we have it. So the average is 103% on the average heart rate. I gave that a contribution amount of 20%. Comparing it to the cardio load, it was relatively close to that. It gave it a contribution amount of 10%, but in the zone five, it was only 60% accurate. I'm giving the bigger portion of the score, 50%, to that, that uh, zone five calculation. And then the zone four and five gets a little boost a little bit more accurate at 87%. So the total score for the Garmin optical heart rate sensor is 78%. So that means 22% of your work is not being taken into account when it comes to calculating your training effect, the impact on your body, the recovery time needed, and your load over time. So let's come back together for a summary. Okay, so what do we see? Of the hop optical heart rate um, accuracy I've tested so far with the Sunto 7 and the Precision Prime. I'm going to do some other future tests, tracking accuracy of the Apple Watch series, maybe the Samsung series, maybe the standalone Sunto uh, 9 heart, optical heart rate sensor, which covers the 9, 5, and 3. But for this one, we can see that the Garmin optical heart rate sensor called the Elevate is a, scoring a 78 percentile. So it's the highest and most accurate that I've tested, but it does so show that even in this most accurate test so far, you're missing about 22% of your workout. You're missing a chunk when it comes to evaluating your load, your strain, your needed recovery time between workouts so that you can hit the next workout hard. So again, use a chest strap, but that's it folks. The optical heart rate sensor on the Garmin scoring it at a 72% accuracy level when it comes to CrossFit training or high intensity interval training. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Please consider subscribing because there's a lot more videos and reviews when it comes to devices for tracking this type of training. Thanks so much. This is the Fit Gear Hunter.